Hello, and welcome back to the Xamarin Tutorials. Today we're going to start on the settings page. Uh, we don't have the home page exactly where we want it, but we have a lot of what we want to be presented on the home page to be there. So we'll start on the settings page. The settings page, we're going to allow the user to add or edit cities. We're going to, uh, I have it highlighted here, we're going to allow them to choose user settings like Fahrenheit or Celsius. And then I have an a, a, you know asterisk, asterisk, or star, star, maybe, on the app theme. We're not going to start app theme right away, but this will be a way to show you how to uh, change static resource for styles and just implement it app-wide. So let's get started on the settings page. We can open up Visual Studio. Uh, we're right at the spot where we left off last time. Uh, also, just a real quick side note, I'm going to start keeping these videos down to under 30 minutes because they've been running rather long and they're covering a lot of topics and so I want to really uh, focus the you know the topic of each video on one thing so you know this video will be settings page probably just the XAML and then I'll, I'll, I'll stop the video I'll start another video and I'll, I'll go to the view model and uh, we'll go that way as long as we keep it around 30 minutes or less so let's get into settings. So settings might be a little confusing because we have the settings service and then we also have the settings page. These things are not related. Settings service is uh, you know, app wide and the settings page is just that. It's the page for settings. And so let's go to our settings page.xaml and we can open it. It's just the basic uh, kind of default template that Xamarin provides when you add a new page. We did change you know, welcome to Xamarin Forms, we change it to the settings page, but now we're going to change this and add those uh, at least two settings and possibly even this app theme. Uh, maybe we'll add app theme and put <clears throat> like a coming soon detail text beneath it. So we'll start with add or edit cities. So we'll go into Visual Studio and we can get rid of this label and uh, we, we're actually going to add another label but we're going to put um, like an icon next to it uh, we will maybe show a list of the cities you already have uh, you know maybe we'll implement a long press which will uh, show like a context menu and then you can remove or edit that city and then you know hit the plus icon and you can add a city so basically how we want to start is just with our view components and then we will style them after. So let's start with uh, a label. I know we just deleted one, but we're going to add our own label and text will be cities. Um, we can just close that off for now. It's, it's just not going to look great, but we can add styles to it later. So we have cities. Uh, beneath that, uh, we might want to show a list of our cities. Uh, you, you have the choice here if you want the whole page to scroll, we would use a scroll view. Um, or if we want just sections on the page to scroll, like sections for cities. And um, that might be what we do. And let's go back to our outline real quick. So you have like choose Fahrenheit or Celsius, choose app theme. These would both likely go in pickers. Uh, but add or edit cities, showing your actual cities would be in that list view. And so we might want to put list view on the bottom to... Uh, you know, having a scroll region on the top with static components on the bottom might not be too user friendly, but having that scrollable on the bottom uh, sort of seems like the page, you know, the phone screen ends and there's something beneath it. And so we'll put add or edit cities on the bottom. So let's go ahead and add our list view beneath the label that says cities. Uh, so we'll put list view here. Um, we don't really have a data template or an item source yet so let's just go ahead and open it it'll create the end tag and we'll leave it empty for now so what we do want to add for attributes is the uh, vertical options we want it to fill and expand so that it takes up the remainder of the stack layout so above the city's label we can add we want that Fahrenheit and we want that app theme so let's go ahead and add a label for uh, what, what would you call these units of measurement or let's just call it units so text is units 
and we can close that and then beneath that we'll have our it's it's going to end up being oh, i wish it would stop doing that hold on one second okay so uh beneath units we can um you know we're going to have our custom view so i'm going to make a comment whoops i'm going to make a comment and this will be our custom picker because we want to dress it up and make it look fancy but for now we'll we'll say it's going to be a custom picker but for now we'll put in a placeholder and that placeholder can just be uh doesn't matter label we're going to replace this so label text is uh celsius for now we'll replace this uh with our custom picker and the custom picker is going to maybe present like a you know like a stack layout that you can choose from and and we'll go from there but uh, you know what let's instead of a label let's delete that uh because we're going to use a picker anyway the, all we're going to do is dress it up and use a custom view probably but for now we can still use a picker and so picker lets you it, it's pretty much like an edit text except when you touch the user touches it they don't get to actually edit the text specifically uh, they get to choose from a selection on iOS it'll come up from the bottom and you know you, you've seen it before it's when you can select the date um, and on Android it'll present a modal dialog on the top of the screen and you can uh, scroll through and pick your selection so picker um, item source we can you know bind to what we will call um, our units or we can create our item source from an array like a string array and since we only have those two options, uh, there's no real sense in binding to our view model because nothing will change. So we can make our item source that, sh that string array. Anyway, so with Picker, um, you do get to put a title in, and that'll be like the placeholder. And so uh, you can either default this to, you know, if you want it to be Fahrenheit or Celsius or whatever, um, or you can put like select units. And so on this, you, you really want it to be one or the other and so we can default it to Fahrenheit and so I'm going to pull up Google over on my other screen and I'm gonna look up the spelling for Fahrenheit I'm sure that's common knowledge but I, I need I'm gonna look it up Fahrenheit I'm pretty sure pretty sure I nailed it and actually I wish I had Google on the other screen so you could see that I pro I did not nail it I missed an H okay so uh, so title um, we're going to select a default selected index so title doesn't matter too much we can put units here and one more second hold on and so if we do okay so we can come to uh, let's see Okay, so we have uh, picker title is units. We're not we're not really going to show that because we're going to choose a default selected index, and our selected index will default to just one. It's fine. Um, we can even do zero. Let's do zero. And then uh, we can we can open this tag to create a closing tag. And in here we can say picker dot item source. And in here we can provide an array, so X array, and X comes from up here, XML and S, which is XML namespace X, come from the XAML. And so here we can say X array, and our type will be an X type. Uh, what can we just can we just say string? String? Yeah, sure. I think I think we can just do that. And so if we open this up, we can provide some X strings, I believe. And so in these tags, we can put Fahrenheit and Celsius. And so I pulled up Fahrenheit uh, to get the proper spelling. And so it's F-A-H-R-E-N-H-E-I-T. No, I, I, I think I also had the E and I messed up. So I, I totally whiffed on that. But so Fahrenheit, and that'll be our default selected index. And then we'll also provide uh, Celsius. So string cell. Yes. 
And I'm just going to check real quick and make sure I spelled that right as well. Celsius. And it turns out I did not. It's, a, it's an S. So. Super embarrassing. Anyway, so Fahrenheit Celsius. Uh, we'll put our default selected index at zero, which will make it Fahrenheit. Um, we will want to uh, actually bind this to the view model so that when it changes or when we, uh, you know, press back or save or whatever, we can register the selected index and we can store it locally. Uh, but for now, we'll leave it at zero. Uh, we need to change it. We're not registering it yet, but we will. And so. Uh, let's put to do here because this actually is not a custom picker. So to do custom picker, uh, we will we will change this to make it look nice. But for now, we just want to get our layout set and make it something we're comfortable with. Uh, let's say in between, you know, the two pickers and then the list view, we want to maybe put uh, like this horizontal line. We can use a box view for that, um, so we can define the color. And that color can be just black, and then we can put an opacity on it. And that opacity can be, you know, 0 0.65 or something. It'll make it sort of like a gray. Uh, the height request, we'll want to do just one or two to make it a thin line. And then horizontal options, fill and expand. And so what that'll do is send it, make it the entire width of the screen. Uh, we actually don't want that. We want to give it margins on the left and right. And so on the margins, we say 20 left and right, and then comma zero for top and bottom. Maybe we'll do a 10 top and bottom, which will give it kind of like padding. Um, and then we'll just put a space between those to make it look a little, little cleaner. And so right now we have our units on top, uh, you know, vert, a horizontal line, and then below that cities, followed by a list of uh, the cities you've added. Uh, let me just silence my phone quick. Okay, so the cities you've added, we'll put those in here. Uh, and so below this picker, we need uh, another label and picker. And so this label text will be um, app theme, and we'll provide some you know some default themes. Uh, so below this is another picker, and this picker title will be app theme. And uh, selected index will say zero again. We're going to bind this to the view model, uh, but we'll use one of the properties here and this will be item source again and we can do the same thing we can use an array of uh, type string so x type equals x string not stack layout string and uh, in here we can start providing app theme so we could have like uh, you know it says to be a not static uh, string and in here we can say like uh, light, and we can even say this is like default, and that's this the theme you'll see here. And then one of the the common things we're seeing a lot now is like uh, to happen again string like dark, um, but then you could provide a couple others. So let's do like two more, and we'll call them some other things. So we have dark. Let's do uh, like blue. Blue is we'll just say it's like a blue theme. And then maybe like a pink theme. So pink. So there's your four themes for now. You have light, dark, blue, and pink. And then we're going to have to come up with some styles to associate to, you know, to light, dark, blue, and pink. I think typically in, in the Microsoft world, light and blue are pretty similar. But, you know, we, we can get there. Um, let's go ahead and, and put... You know, maybe like another label beneath this, the first one, which was like, you know, app theme. And we'll say coming soon. And this is going to have another style on it, which will make it smaller, a lighter text, maybe italicized. And it'll just kind of be like, you know, so then we, we can say, um, you know, this is enabled as false, is enabled as false, meaning the user taps it, nothing happens. Uh, and we can come back to this, but it's not really on the focus for right now. Um, let's see. So, I don't see a time frame. So, okay, I guess we're going to have to wing it on how long this recording goes because um, I'm not really seeing a, a time frame on OBS. So, anyway, moving on. Uh, we can go for like another 15 minutes. Hopefully we get settings, settings page. Let's go ahead and 
test it quick to see kind of how it looks. And if it looks okay, we can stop this video and I'll go right to the next video to start on the view model so that we can actually bind to the settings page and make changes. Uh, and then once we're done with the settings page, we're going to get into these mock services. And so mock services will let us actually, uh, you know, present data, data that we would control, you know, through the mock services, but they'll, they'll act like the real services. So once we actually link up to real services, uh, we, you know, it, it behaves as we expect. So this might take a minute to load up, but what kind of what we expect to see, we'll have that, you know, that header bar on the top, and I think it'll be a blue with a back arrow. Uh, below that, we should see just a label, your standard label with units. Below that, we should see a picker. Um, I can't remember if these default to taking up the whole space available horizontally, but I don't think they do. Uh, so I think it'll be like as big as it can be for just units. Uh, but then below that, we'll see an, two more labels and another picker for app theme. Uh, below that, we should see a horizontal line, and then we should see a label for cities, and this, this will, will be blank, blank so we, we, we won't, won't see anything, anything for this view. view. I, I think, think on, on iOS, iOS, when you, you have, have this list view, it converts to a table view, and table views have, you know, like your default lines to separate the UI table view cells, but let's, let's see how, how this loads, loads up. Uh, it, you know, first we'll get our default information for Chicago, Illinois, it'll show 50.5 degrees, partly cloudy, and then once we click settings, up in the top right, it should bring us to uh, our settings page. And if that is presenting properly, then we'll, we'll go ahead and end this video. Meaning, if, it, if you guys have already tested it and gotten as far as you need to go, you probably just skip the rest of this video and head to the next one. Okay, looks, looks like it's starting up. up. So, so we, we should see, you know, the, the, the screen worked on last time, so we should have, you know, uh, Chicago alone in the top left, so the icon on the right, that 50 degree with the cloud, partly cloudy, and we should be able to tap that settings icon. So a splash page here would be great, so we don't have to just look at a white page. But here we go. So we have Chicago, Illinois in the top left. Settings icon on the top right. We have our 50 degree partly cloudy here. And so when we tap a settings icon, we go... Well, there we go. So we go to this next screen. We have units with the picker that has units. Uh, you, you have your choice of Fahrenheit and Celsius. You can press cancel to leave it blank. If you click it and press Fahrenheit, uh, selected index is actually now... now uh, zero instead of negative one. Negative one is like your default. We can't we can't go back to to negative one. But uh, clicking Fahrenheit gives you a selected index of zero. Uh, clicking Celsius gives you your selected index of one. And so then we have app theme coming soon. We're gonna have to style this up a little bit. But the, you know the picker is disabled, so you can't select. Uh, you know, you can try to click add thing, nothing happens. We have our horizontal line with the margins of 20 and 20 on the left and right, and then cities, and as we expect, our list is blank. And so, uh, in the next video, we will bind uh, the components, especially the pickers, as well as the list view for the cities. We'll bind it to the view model, and so, uh, if, you know, we can call to our service mock or real and if our mock or real services return like no cities right now if we can show a message saying there are no cities added right now you know go ahead and tap this tap the button to add a city or get started with a city or something um but when they change celsius to fahrenheit we can make a quick call to app settings to save that persistent data storage and then the next time every time thereafter that they open the app you know their their units will be Fahrenheit or Celsius, depending on what they selected here. App theme, we're going to hold off on, but once they do, this is like blue bar can change to, you know, a dark or a light or a pink or a blue, and, and then we'll go from there. So thanks for stopping by. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, give a comment if you have any questions, and then we will see you next time.